Community engagement is not just about telling a story. It's about where the story comes from, how it's told, who tells it, where it's told, and most importantly, getting people to listen to and understand it. The engagement strategy for the Water Mills and Marshes project is simple. Drive meaningful programmes into educational establishments and from there into the wider community. This short film charts progress so far. It was just over a year ago that the Water Mills and Marshes project launched at Norwich Cathedral and work began on implementing the community engagement strategy. A 50-minute roadshow introduced primary school's pupils to the project and featured a series of films featuring Daisy, our 12-year-old presenter, films on wildlife, history and mills, all featured in the roadshow along with other presentations and quizzes. Teachers were impressed with the quality, type and depth of the roadshows and gave them an overall effectiveness rating of 97%. Once they had the basic background to the initiative, it was time for them to get first-hand experience. A project pack trip from Alton Broad, Alton Dyke and onto the River Waveney gave them a chance to learn about the wildlife, landscape and history of the Broads National Park. I really liked it because you got to see all wildlife yeah, and experience if you yeah. never been on a boat, what it like feels me. like to be on a boat. Yeah. It's also and oh, it's I quite... thought today was awesome. Yeah. They spent the rest of the day here at Colton Marsh's nature reserve. A tour of the different habitats and a mammal identification session was followed by dike dipping, a real chance to understand the invertebrates that populate the broads, ditches and dikes. I swear I saw one. All this activity was leading to one point. Could we get them to appreciate not only the wildlife and the history, but also get them to grasp the real issue of conservation versus public access? Using all the knowledge they had gained, they were asked to design and build a broad in a box. They were given two budget sheets, one for access and one for conservation. The sheets contained pre-priced items they could have in their models, such as a nature reserve or hotel. The only stipulation was that the budgets must balance so they could not spend more on access than conservation. Group working, serious discussions, and occasional flare-up were all part of the process. Until, at last, the proud owners of each broad were asked to showcase their efforts to the rest of the class. We have a hotel for you to stay in and watch the animals from your balcony. And we have boats to go out to watch the swans, fish and ducks. We've got a dike dipping area over here and we've got a few cows um, behind it and you can cross the dike to have a look at some cows and we also have a few um, houseboats so you can <coughs> look around. We have woodlands here. We have, have a camouflage, camouflage shop where camouflage. you can put on camouflage suits to take pictures of birds. Oh, and we have a hotel, hotel if you would like to stay. We've got some cow feeding, what you can feed to the cow. And we have a bridge here and we've got a bird here and in here is some food for the birds. Maybe try come to our nature reserve, see what birds you can find. You might find some cormorants, maybe some marsh harriers or swans. And you can see the, um, the water and the animals from the play area. And also there's um, sailing boats um, which you can sail along to see all the wildlife. And we have some cows behind the car. And, we have and a water bowl. Bike. We have um, a windmill and some grass snakes and some stones are about to go for a swim. In total, 125 broads in a box were constructed. To get to this stage, we had worked with over 600 pupils from 12 primary schools. On average, we spent 12 hours with each pupil, meaning that students had been exposed to over 7,500 learning hours on the Water, Mills and Marshes project. Summerleighton Primary School epitomised the way schools had embraced the programme. 
they delivered extra lessons geared to the Broads National Park to enable their students to gain even more insight. Partly as a reward for their efforts, some of Leighton were chosen to undertake something of an experiment. We knew we could hold the pupils' attention for one day at a time, but could we hold it for three days? To test this out, we designed what we believe to be the first official exchange visit between schools from two national parks. Berry School, nestled in the South Downs, would partner Summer Leighton, both schools spending three days in each other's national park. Berry School came to the Broads National Park first and were greeted by a presentation from Summer Leighton pupils. Following an evening of traditional campfire activity, the pupils awoke the following morning looking forward to a day full of learning opportunities. A boat trip on the Waveney yielded a host of wildlife spotting, including an otter. The activity-packed afternoon visit to Carlton Marsh's nature reserve featured a host of practical exercises and was followed by a walk to Herringfleet Mill. Last but not least was the guided tour of the Summer Leighton Estate, a real first-hand experience of farming within the Broads. To finish off the day, a joint barbecue with pupils from Summer Leighton. We asked them about their stay and what they thought the major difference was between the Broads and their own area. I like seeing the water scorpion and the water stick insect. And I the like, snorkel I like, is cool. I like seeing like all the different water creatures that there was in the dike. I enjoyed just like doing all the dipping and stuff. It's different because it's more flat than yeah. where, yeah. where we where we're, we we're used live. to the bumpy. The South Downs yeah. just like makes the whole place bumpy. 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 Yeah. It's nice to know that like the it's just like well, flat, like, like to see easier. like really really far. Easier. And if you were riding your bike, it would be easier to ride instead of having yeah. to go up hills and yeah. going down. The summer Leighton visit to the South Downs featured geocaching, trekking across the downs, with the highlight being the visit to the Weald and Downland Museum. Buildings from all ages are rescued from across the country and rebuilt here. All key buildings have volunteer guides to help you learn more. Tudor cooking was of particular interest to students. What do you use this for? No stone was left unturned as they visited buildings from most periods in history and learned how people lived and worked. There was even an opportunity to learn some medieval dance techniques. We wondered if they had any thoughts on what they had experienced. The biggest difference from our, from Summer Leighton and here is probably the, a, the age of the buildings. They're really old. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And also I think there's lots and lots of hills and we walked up there and I thought that was really, really fun. And it was very good and fun at the museum although I don't really like that the spoons and cups are made out of animal horns. High school and college students did not escape the water mills and marshes learning experience which features both academic and interpretive activity. High school science students receive an hour's briefing on the Broads National Park prior to being offered a chance to hone their practical skills by learning to undertake transects. Probably the most impressive collaboration between high schools and colleges was the incredible Broads album. A project that was designed to highlight the community learning from the community element of the delivery plan. Students were taken on a tour of the National Park and its key features in order that they could draw inspiration for their proposed album track. Some chose to work alone and others in groups. They had six weeks to develop their songs into outlines. High school students were offered additional expertise from a professional singer-songwriter. After two months of development, the final 11 tracks were chosen and the students began to record their songs. In May, they got to perform their tracks live at the Marina Theatre in Lowestoft.
your heart is still at Heritage construction is a key area of the Water, Mills and Marshes project. For current FE College volunteers, we developed and helped deliver an initial introduction session for 200 students, featuring a short film we produced that highlights the benefits of a career in heritage construction. Ask yourself this, you are driving along in a few years time with the kids in the car. Would you rather say to the kids, I built those, or that's still standing because of me? No contest. For high school pupils on the point of making initial career choices, we made another film aimed at getting them to think about the many careers that heritage encompasses. I live somewhere quite special, so why don't I get the job that helps to keep it special? Places like Norfolk and Suffolk are different from other places around the country. Not all have these, these, those, them, or me. In addition, we have run many Hidden Gems Days for the general public and vulnerable groups, helping them to discover the history and habitats of the Broads. So that was 2018. Is it more of the same for 2019? Well, it's certainly more, but not exactly the same. This year, we will be reaching 16 primary schools, two high schools and two sixth form colleges. We will be hosting a large community event for the area at Acle Leisure Centre, delivering another Broads album, as well as taking our mobile exhibition unit to school sports days and village fates. We are only at the end of the first year, but we're already delivering and further developing some legacy projects. You may recall the highly successful digital biathlon that we developed very early in the project in conjunction with students from Pakefield High School. Not only is it being included in the latest Brex, Fen, Edge and Rivers HLF development programme, but it could well form part of a wider wellbeing programme being developed in conjunction with the University of Essex and Suffolk County Council. It doesn't end there. The Water Mills and Marshes Heritage Skills programme we developed has justifiably received acclaim from many sources, including the HLF. We are currently looking to see if we can obtain funding to trial a new approach to heritage skills recruitment, training and retention. Seeing young people understand and actively take part in heritage skills as a career would be a real legacy for the Water, Mills and Marshes project. We thought we'd end on something that we felt epitomises the essence of place, a place to achieve ethos of the entire project. This is Daisy our 12-year-old presenter desperately trying to complete the final shot in one of our films. With its wealth of wildlife, ancient built heritage, and of course, no, and exciting tourist attractions, and of course the mills, the Broads landscape is truly unique. With its wealth of wildlife, right, with its wealth of wildlife, ancient built heritage, and exciting visitor attractions, and of course, the mills, the Broads landscape is truly unique. With its wealth of wildlife, ancient built heritage, exciting tourist attractions. One, two, three. With its wealth of wildlife, ancient built heritage, exciting tourist attractions, and of course, the mills. The Broads landscape is truly unique.